Despite being perilously close to the government's national challenge danger zone, Lillian Bayliss head teacher Gary Phillips has found a reason to be cheerful. Today's an exciting day. I have here in my hand a piece of paper, as Neville Chamberlain once said. I can't find it now. Which the DCSF said, so we can look at the dratted league tables before they get published. Here we go. Gary's just received official confirmation that he's hit the minimum national challenge target of 30% GCSE A starter Cs with English and Maths. There we have it. These are the big figures. Five A to Cs with English and Maths has gone up to 30%, the benchmark, and the five A to Cs without has gone up to 49% from 36 last year. And even more beautifully, the CVA from two to four has gone up to 1020. So they're very good. And we knew all this, and we've known it all for months, because we do the analysis ourselves, but there's something deeply satisfying about seeing it being all agreed and put in the public domain yeah. in these silly tables that nobody looks at. The, just for the value added, I mean, the mean is one, isn't it, or something? Just... It's a thousand, yeah. Yeah. It's You're a 1020, one... I guess, because I don't know if there's an explanation, actually. User guider. Percentiles, here we are, 10, 20. 10, 13 to 10, 20. We're in the top 25% of schools nationally. Yeah, it's very good, isn't it? It could be better, it could be in the top 5%. We're in the middle of the top quartile. That's not bad, 80% are below us, but it's still 20% above us. If you want to go down to the library now and see Miss Bailey, and I'm going to bring the others down, OK? All right? See you down there, David. Kadeen? You're supposed to be in the library, remember? Product design. Deputy Head Sue Wardrops organising intervention sessions for Year 11 CD borderline students. Yeah, which is... In the past, we made the mistake of looking at the cohorts which had left and saying, well, if that group had underachieved, that must be a systemic problem in our school. So you go running around for a year trying to right the wrong without actually looking in enough deal of the cohort in front of us. It's your English work I really want to focus on. So I'm taking you out of art and you've got a new teacher who's going to be teaching you in the library in a very small group, six students, to get you that C or above in English. OK, yeah? I didn't want to take you out of animation because I know you're fantastic at animation. Yeah, and, you're going to, and that's two GCSEs and you're going to do well at that. But art, I think, is the one where um, you know, all that amazing, is that right? Yeah. OK. Four or five years ago, we were strongly... The tail which strongly wagged the dog at this school was the GCSE cohort which had left. And they're saying, well, in that group, black Caribbean boys underachieved, so we need to redouble our efforts on those. Richard! Where are you going? No, you're not. Come upstairs, I want to speak to you. Well, it actually wasn't about systemic issues within the school. No, he's not going to be happy. It was about cohort-dependent issues. And that's the trick of using data in the right way. And that was a great leap forward this year. You're able enough to get a C in English, but I don't think you're going to get it if you don't limit a little bit of what you're doing in school. So I spoke to all your teachers about the options you do and the one that came back that you actually was DT. So what, I'm gonna, what I've done is I've arranged for you to drop that, and every time you would normally have that, you'll be with a, a new teacher, who's, she's in the library, she's called Miss Bailey, and she'll be basically honing your skills to ensure you get that C or above in your English. OK? All right? Yes? Yeah. Happy? Ish? Uh, well, I would prefer to go into DT, because really, um, What's going on is in ICT, they're doing a film project and I'm involved in it. But that's not to do with product design, is it? Uh, that's but, um, that's not will, to do with product will, design. They will come out and got me out to help with the project. But the problem, OK, but the problem with that is that's going to get you no qualifications, is it? In, in six, ten months' time, when you can't get into a college that you want to go to because you haven't got your English, you'll be saying, why did I do that? Why didn't I do this? But my English is going well. I mean, okay. my, rec my no, no. recent piece of coursework that I yeah. did, I, know. I redid my media, I got a yeah. B for it. Yeah, I know that. I know that. Mm. I've looked at yeah, all your I... grades, but the, the thing for me, Richard, is mm. that you're not always in school, 
Morocco, the sum absence, yeah. right, which has an awful knock-on effect on your English, but also you're not like safe. Do you know what I mean? It's not definitely, definite, definite that that's going to happen. And I think you would benefit greatly from some extra time to help you really be safe. The difference with A-level maths, you try something, it doesn't work, you don't give up, you try a different strategy. These top set year 11s took GCSE a year early and are now studying A-level maths. 27 times 2x. 54x. 54x. Anybody play darts? Nope. No. Because 54 is a treble, was it? Yeah, that's one. Not that I've ever been in a pub during an uh, evening uh, <laughs> while I'm teaching. So have we got it right or have I got it wrong? You've got it wrong. Because my darts is terrible. I've got kicked off the team. 54 is treble 18, is it? You get onto a team. Is that right? No. No. Am I nearly right? Yes. Shall I get the door and leave? No. Yes. OK. <laughs> so, Edward, we can do it this way. But of course, it would help you carry the extra power of X. This is Miss Bailey. Miss Bailey's main role in the school is to get the, a lot of the year 11s their C or above in English, OK? So she's going to be working with you till you do your GCSEs on that, on focusing on the skills that you need. Practice, 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 practice. There's a lot of pressure from government on London Challenge to improve results in schools. And so the London Challenge will come and see us and say, you know, what else can we do? And so we've utilised money, resources that we've been allocated by London Challenge, which are specifically targeted at students, you know, to get them a C in English and Maths, because that's the big push. Some of these students have had intervention already, so they've had that couple of lessons of English or they've had one of English and one of Maths. Um, because we've got this extra resource, they're getting a double whammy, they're getting extra Maths and they're getting extra English. And how many pupils does that involve? About 23 children. So if all those 23 children got at least a C in English and Maths, what would be the impact on the school's target? Send them up considerably over, over the 40-odd 40, 40, 40 percent. This evening is a big evening for Year 11. It's the last opportunity for them to come in, meet the tutor, and then go and see the subject teachers, because in four months' time, they're going to be doing their GCSEs. From the mock scores that we've got in, it is realistic to say that 35 to 40 per cent is what we can achieve as a school. Forced to fixate on C's or above in GCSE English, the head of department has to take a tough line. Basically, in the mock exam, he yeah, got an E. I, I totally understand that, pushing him into a higher exam when I, he should have really done a presentation. But we keep thinking with Richard that he is actually capable of doing he far more is, than... He'll put him under pressure and he'll just go, oh, I want him to be an engineer, he needs a C. Yes, he a has C. to have it. A C will do me fine. To assure Richard a C, he's being focused on English language, but he'd prefer to keep on with literature. His mum's annoyed that he's missing out elsewhere. I've just, just found out he's dropped, been dropped to subject, push him up in his English, yeah. where I'm like, but he could get a C and still do the other subject and get that subject and a GCSE Have you there. spoken to Miss Wardrop about yeah, it? Yeah, right. because I wasn't informed of anything that was going on. It was only through talking to my son that I get the information, right. but I didn't get a letter home to say, oh, we're dropping your son's subject, he's going to lose out on a GCSE. Did you say that to Miss Wardrop? Yeah. The school say they did inform parents. Miss England said, like, when he was gutted that it was being pushed out of her class and then into yours. But then he said, oh, no, I like it. It's fine, I like this. And so then it was OK. I did, but I did like going back for the Frankenstein. Yeah. Had you just performed a little bit better in Year 10, you'd have stayed with Miss England and you could have done literature. But without the certainty in English, we can't... It was the media that caught me down, though. Yeah. But now that I've redone really it, I'm still in the lower set. Because they've moved on. While we spent that whole term redoing your media in other bits and yeah. pieces and practising for English, they were moving on with the literature. So I'm afraid they've left you behind because they're now a whole term of work. They've done two pieces of coursework that you haven't done. 
Now, you reset the foundation in November, had the results of that in two days' time. And it is a juicy. What happened was they did the real thing last June. Yeah. Most of them got a C, a yeah. few didn't. The few that didn't resat in November, yeah. and we thought we'll have another go and see what they do. Okay. Now, if you do get a C in the November, I'm stuck with a problem about what to do with you, because my group is a CD borderline group, which is trying to get people C's or B's at the most, right? Really, it's inappropriate for you to be in my group if you've already got a C on paper. So I might then consider moving you back to Miss England, in which case you would have to do an essay, two essays, pretty quickly. But then if we find that you don't get that C, then you're with me till June, practicing, practicing, practicing. She didn't do all that well in the mock exam. She got an E, and it was quite a low E as well. So what I've done is I've put her into a group that's very small so that she can get a bit more help from Mr. Porter. Um, but I'm afraid I couldn't keep her in my group because my group's for students who are CD borderline. And I'm missing her a lot because I really like teaching her and she really tries hard. Have you found it yet? I just wanted to show you some of the work she's done. They're all finished now, aren't they, as well? Which is amazing achievement, there we are. We've got some students who've not finished and they've been here for the whole time. This is her, her Romeo and Juliet, which she found very hard because she hadn't been in the classes when we studied the play, but somehow she's managed to do it. She had a bit of help from me, but because I'd done it in year 10, I couldn't really give her all that much help. Um, and this is her original writing, which is, uh, all, it mentions you quite a lot, actually. It's all about her life, you know, moving from Jamaica to here. And this is her of Mice and Men. She never did this book with the class, so she's had to do this all on her own. She also did homeworks for me every single time and gave them in and I marked them and gave them back. And, and for that reason, your writing's really improved in the short time you've been here. So I'm really pleased with you. Um, and if you just managed to get sort of a few more marks in that exam, I could have kept you in the group, but I couldn't do it. It's okay, it's my own place. Yeah, and you've got a nice small group, and Mr. Porter can give you a lot more attention than I could in mine. Yeah. So I think it'll work out well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for okay. coming in. Thank you. It's a sort of almost sort of tragic acceptance of a situation. And she knew that I didn't want to lose her from the group. And she said, it's all right, sir, trying to make me feel better about it, which is really nice of her. Because I do feel guilty about it now. And if I could have squeezed her in, I would have squeezed her in anyway. It's quite emotional. It is quite emotional, because you're dealing with people's lives and the future. In Gary's harsh world, good news doesn't last long. The only people who really look at CVI are inspectors. Ultimately, what people look at is not, is not CVI, it's two-level progress and the number who get through the standard, and the standard is 30% 5A to C with English and Maths, which is what we achieved last year and what we have to achieve next year. If our CVI is very good in subjects and across the school, but we're below 30%, nobody will be interested. No pats on the back. No. So it's nice for the teachers involved to know they're doing the right thing and it gives them a greater feeling of trust and confidence in what they're doing. But it doesn't change anything.